special guest this evening I'm very excited to have on board tonight is Dr. Richard Allen Miller. An author and researcher, Dr. Richard Allen Miller, reveals a depth of knowledge and experience in alternative agriculture, physics, and metaphysics. Miller began working in the secret world of Navy Intel, SEAL Corp., and then MRU in the late 60s and now has amazing experiences and conclusions to share. Before many leading-edge concepts became trending topics, Miller was and is in the international front lines of research, experimentation, and documentation. His websites are richardallenmiller.com and oak-publishing.com. And I hear him rattling around over there in the illusion of space and time and virtual space. Welcome, Dr. Richard Allen Miller. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm going bald. I'm natural. Oh, no. Yeah, oh. I know. I had uh, got a life chance to figure out what it's like living off the grid. Uh, CenturyLink lost their, my telephone and my internet for almost a full week. It was wow. Crazy. wow. Yeah. I, I hope you they never credit know you for that. that. What's that? I hope they credit you for the week that you lost. That oh you yeah, that, yeah. It's always about money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, but it was really creepy because I didn't know what to do with myself. I figured it out later, but at at, at that point, I had no idea how much I was attached to using the internet. I spent too much. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm I'm <laughs> I should be out in the woods. Not in front well, of a, a camera and a microphone. Well, it was good to take a little downtime away from the illusion of the internet, right? The virtual yeah, world to nowhere. Was, yeah, it was wonderful. And I'm, to some extent, I'm kind of grateful because it taught me a really important lesson on what is important in my life. Yeah, exactly. Kids, it's important, but this is crazy to have that kind of lost feeling. I got sick. I, you know, really? I was in the movies. Yeah, I, I got sick. I got depressed. I slept. You know, walked around in a robe. <laughs> you had yeah. um, withdrawals, right? Yeah, yeah, withdrawals. Yeah, that's exactly correct. Yes. <laughs> that's not healthy, though. It's an addiction. I'm telling you. I think everybody should just break away from the internet once in a while. Well, it's kind of important because there is going to be a grid collapse. You can count on it. When do you think that's going to happen? Yes. <laughs> I don't no, know. No, when? Yeah, okay. uh, any time now. And the bad news is when the Hopi talk about the red and blue Kuchina, that would suggest a red ship with something going through our solar system so fast there's absolutely no warning. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, they like, talk yeah. Well, they say that the red um, the red shift or the red star is, is correlated to um, Planet X. That so yeah, that's that 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 thing right now is out near Uranus, and uh, that Stanford and both Caltech. There's an object out there that has four times, mm -hmm. like, four times the size of you. And Very interesting. The gravitational shifts in our atmosphere, the weather changes on Earth, and the orbit changes. The Earth is now it's actually changed three three. Well, it's certainly, we certainly are dealing with a lot of strange things. What do you, what is your take on the new Hertz? Well, not the new Hertz frequency, but the Schumann resonance has spiked up quite a bit. What's your take on that? Well, Schumann's resonance doesn't change. That's, that's, it can't change. That's a Well, they said it's been answer. spiking up though. Did, did well, you see that article? I, yeah, I've seen articles that would suggest that. I don't think it is. Okay. I, I, I would, I would debate that in that Titan is four. Earth is uh, 8.34 or 4.6, something like that. It's it's a constant having to do with lightning strikes on the Earth. And uh, that was Dr. Schumann that first proposed that. Hainsworth was the one that uh, was completing his work when he died. Uh, Murdoch University asked uh, Iona and I to complete that work. It was published in Nexus Magazine. I don't think Schumann's residence resonance itself shifting. However, there is a beam of energy uh, in gamma and other frequency bands that are uh, hitting the Earth right now, causing a speed up of memory and other kinds of things inside. I don't know what that's about. Uh, mm -hmm. It's coming from the central of our galaxy. And it well, might have something to do with uh, the red Pachina. I don't know that. Yeah, I'm waiting for the to, the Hopi dancers to make their take their masks off, rather uh, the blue star. Aren't they supposed the, to take the mask yeah, off at the end of the illusion of? Yeah, well, here's that. That's all in metaphor. Like the the the, the 
Clovis culture is what the, the Hopi sing about because their medicine is a is from its word of mouth. It, it, they sing their history, their children. It's the, like the Kabbalah used to be all word of mouth. And um, basically, uh, they have 5,000 years of history where the Clovis crawled out of a cave uh, mm -hmm. because of this event that occurred. However, two weeks ago, down in Popo, where they're un unraveling and unearthing the different sections of the Clovis culture, they discovered that that race had based off. We have been here before. And France, in their cave of dream, has that bison on the wall. Old, old guard used to say, yeah, cavemen. And then when taken a closer look at it, they noticed that there were dots around the eye that absolutely confirmed the star map. And the cave further down in France was the same star map in reverse, which means they were thought now, I don't know what this all means, except that we are in a thick epoch cycle that has always occurred, where there's been a kind of a refresh button mankind development. Mm -hmm. And I think we're due for something. You asked when, you know, the Hopi, not the Hopi, the Mayans tried to predict it in 2012 and missed it because there's a history of several years. We're talking about a 6,000 year event is cyclic for over 6,000 years. Gerald Clark, others have written about that. I mm -hmm. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, it's very interesting. Well, it seems like it's Chinese water torture insofar as uh, anything dramatic happening here on this illusion of the planet while we're living on it. Yeah, I'm always no, waiting I, for the big I, event to happen. You know, I'm kind of like that. I'm kind of bored here. Um, so. <laughs> I'm writing, yeah, I'm writing on the non-local mind now. I'm trying to finish hey, that book you, you, and, okay, your, and, your audio sounds better right this minute. So whatever you're doing, yeah, that's working. Okay, that means I'm closer. I could call, I'm yes. closer. Okay. Yeah. Good. What are you Thank working you. on? Yeah, I, well. Okay, so I'm writing The Non-Local Mind, and I finished Chapter 7, and it's called Time Travel and the True Nature of Cavitation. And in that chapter, I have discovered what the soul is, and from a physics point of view, and what happens at the moment and the moment just after the death. And um, I thought that might be kind of an interesting area to talk about today. Because mm -hmm. back in 1970, when I was laid off at Boeing, 30,000 PhDs that hit the street in one day, lost the P1 contract, I was immediately hired at, in anesthesiology at the UW, which is where I completed a lot of my military. And that was Jerry Pollack that hired me. He was my lead. And Jerry has written a book called The Fourth Phase of Water. His interest in water began when he wanted to know why muscle seemed to have memory. The idea that when you lost the muscle group, it would always regrow or try to regrow back to its original form. And he was curious as to why it would be the same different person. That's when he discovered that it was the water inside the muscle that had a structure that came up with the conclusion zone of H3O2. Now, we've talked about structured water in the French program, and mm -hmm. I'm now going to quote Sir Roger Penrose, my, my mentor at Princeton, and he suggests that the soul is structured water inside a microtubule. At the moment of death, there is a 3.2 ounce weight loss in the body. And we don't know what that is. And I'm going to suggest that it is structured water going back to the multiverse. And I wrote about the multiverse in the last chapter mm -hmm. seven. Chapter eight, what I'm writing right now, is called Walk the Chasm for Adventure. We go home every night when we drink. This is one of the purposes of dream, to crack. And um, that state of consciousness only occurs in astral projection. If one is listening to Shabbat or soul travel, not much, uh, or in near-death experiences, but we come back to memory of, of it's almost precisely the same. That's Cooper Ross and James Holmes. Now, something else is going on quite correct. The 
physical world as we understand it is illusionary. And as such, it's possible to change. And you can do that development of all states of consciousness. And that's where I'm going next in the form of magic. I study magic. Yeah, we're going to get into the magic tonight, and make sure you, you stay closer to the mic. Uh, you're kind of just breaking up just a teeny tiny bit here and there. Yeah, kind of we in may end up, yeah, we may, again, I'm going to go up here on my call and see if Well, I, you sound fine. Like right there, you sound good. It's just when some, once in a while you'll phase out a little bit, so. Okay, maybe I can't bob and weave like I do. I'm That's an idiot. That's probably savant. it. Okay. I am, so, yeah, I'm functioning savant, and believe it or not, I hum and draw, and I do all the things you expect the rain man. Except mm -hmm. that I culturally program to behave myself in public. <laughs> well, that's all right. It almost sounds like PTSD, though. That's what you're t describing there. But um, so you're saying that it's it's water based. I would have thought it was more plasma oriented. No, it's it's structured water and the memory in the structure of water in the exclusion zone. What they call easy exclusion zone mm -hmm. is uh, one million times six zero more data and information than held in gallium arsenide and what we call the forbidden zone in solid state physics. Yeah, that's very fascinating. So, uh, yeah, I'll send you um, I'll send you some copy on that so you can read it and uh, the mathematics involved will probably be vessel functions uh, dealing with the drum drum surface uh, fractals for the uh, holographic aspect and it will instead of using string theory probably use a thing called knot theory, probably Kaufman and knot theory, uh, where plasmas and the way membrane physics. Mm -hmm. That's Very hard. interesting. Yeah, I, I think I, I'm on to something that's pretty exciting because we don't die. We don't go to heaven. We don't go to hell. Where we go back home. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, we go home to the, where I call it, the full light universe, but yeah, the cosmic the design. What is, yeah. what is now mm -hmm. called multiverse. There's theorems on that that are in the book that will lay out the prospect for further research. Um, I'm excited because I'm literally now starting to see how I can manipulate my physics literally with my mind. That's why a lot of the saints have placed so much emphasis and importance on the, on the training of the mind, the meditation mm -hmm. and other things like that. Right. Well, that's why I said I have such a problem with the misuse of covert warfare, because it inhibits the, the consciousness to some degree. It inhibits thought. So whatever is inhibiting our vibration and frequency or our mental processes uh, has to be negated to some degree. So that's always been a big concern. But, yeah, I agree with you 100 percent that we are we're getting out of here. We're going home. And um, I'm certainly. We, uh, yeah, we to have to be responsible for the thoughts we choose to entertain. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything that you think about is actually going to happen. Yeah, but your thoughts are your thoughts, but what's coming in is, is not, like electronic communication is not your thought. So that's something that needs to be negated and ignored. That's my point, too. But we've talked about that before, but you know what I mean. It's kind of like, you yeah. know, all the chatter, the chatter, they used to call it a chatterbox, if I'm not mistaken, but it's that kind of crap. Um, that can affect consciousness. That can affect people. So well, I would it's say, the distractions uh, all around yeah. us. They're constantly mm -hmm. uh, for, forcing us to lose our train of thought and go to something else. Right. I'm, I'm a perfect at that one. <laughs> now you're, you say, well, you're multitask. You, you multitask quite a bit there. I know you're planning on doing some really cool stuff, and I want to get into that too. And we are going to go into deep levels of, of your hermetic, Kabbalistic background because I love that. Yeah, I um, when I came out of graduate school, it was terrible. Uh, you know, that I got assaulted uh, by Skull and Bones and Bohemian Grove. It was like a so. Gear. Hold on for a second. How did they assault you? Was it energetic? No, they wanted me to join. So they were bullying you physically? Yeah. No, not bullying, but uh, like like a Christian coming at you with their dogma. Mm. And, and I had to armor up. And so what I did is I studied six years with Gershom Scholl. I, I became a hermetic Kabbalist. He was up at New York City College. I had to learn old, old Hebrew and Greek. And I did my own Bible translations and came to my own conclusions about things. But it I can tell you that most all large bureaucracies now have some kind of inner lodge. They're, they're, they started in Europe about 400 years ago for the ultra elite. 
<clears throat> your higher poets, writers, scholars would would all belong to things like Old Song, and that was one of the more popular ones in the 1800s. And to do that, you had to demonstrate physical ability. Now, in OTO, for example, I Bordeaux, Temple, Orient, Temple, and you're Orient. fading out. Get closer to the mic. Okay, I'm sorry about that. How's That's that okay. Sir? You're fine. Okay. Yeah. The OTO, Ordo Templi Orientis, Order of the Temple of the Orient, um, is German originally, uh, about 200 years old, and was uh, given to Aleister Crowley uh, basically because of his advancements in magic using the mass of the Holy Ghost or basically sex magic, based out of Tantra and uh, Eastern traditions. Bennett and others, I actually went through the Bennett School of Gurdjieff and uh, had, to, had to go through that whole rigmarole, you know, where if I wanted to eat, I had to make my own pork, that kind of thing. And mm -hmm. uh, it teaches you a level of discipline that's different that you, that you won't get in the sciences. Uh, for example, uh, and my last advancement about 12 years ago in OTO required me to be bound in equal weight with chain, and I was then put in a tank of water and seal, and I either drowned or I advanced in grade. Now, that's a physical representation of what I can do on the astral or spiritual level plane. Now, I, I have all of these different lodges have uh, you know, protocols in terms of what they will demand uh, for advancement. And uh, you can't just memorize something. You have to be able to physically demonstrate that metaphor. And uh, OTO is quite rigorous. I'm also part of what they call the Argeum or Genum Order of the Silver Star, which is interlodge. Uh, my branch is through the Jane Wolf branch with Phyllis Suckler, who's my teacher. And uh, I have since initiated years ago, others up in Canada, uh, forming Victoria City Life, Gary Gates, Cole, and Judy Sun. Now, these are these are a long time ago thing. And today, while I'm an, a member of the OTO, I'm what they call an oasis. That means I'm out in the wilderness on my own, and I'm fun by what's called maritime law. That means there's nobody above me that I report to. And uh, I run my own ship. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Well, it's maritime law. It's a type of sovereignty. You reach mm -hmm. that in grade seven, which is adeptus exemptus. So let me okay. ask you something. Does that mean you can get away with anything legally or illegally and there's no there's no problem? There's no prosecution? Libra Oz is uh, Libra Oz. I can't mess with another person's will. Right. You know, that's I can't change somebody else. Like I can't shoot them or try to coerce them into or blackmail them into doing something they would not have otherwise done. Not allowed to do that. That's what that's one of the forms of high magic called Libra Oz. Mm -hmm. Rights. Now, man does not actually have rights. He has responsibility. To have rights means you have full disclosure. You don't. Mm -hmm. And so you can't make your proper judgment because you don't have full knowledge. To get mm -hmm. that to that place requires you know, how did Castaneda put it? That was the fourth enemy of man, the gold age. Too old to do anything about it. Once you overcame fear and power and clarity, then you had old age. You were too old to do anything. Yeah, doesn't that suck? <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's a metaphor. Right. Yeah. No, it makes sense, though. Well, I like the idea that you're able to do your own work. And, of course, now you are a Mason as well, correct? I am a uh, blue blood. Okay, so I'm not American. You're with the, yeah, Blue Lodge. Blue Lodge. Okay, so can you explain to me why it's blue? Why do they call it the Blue Lodge? It's not uh, about philanthropy. Blue had to do with, uh, <laughs> where do I begin with that? How about this metaphor? At the moment of death, you're going to be given a choice. You're going to either have a tunnel of light with all your friends waving at you, or you're going to have the blue light. Mm-hmm. There's your metaphor. Great. So let's go yeah. for the blue if you light. Choose, hope, if right? you choose the tunnel, you come back here. Ooh, more tunnels. I've heard that before, you know. I've heard that an yeah, awful lot. Like uh, a... Yeah, Zen Gardner, others, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Right. So the blue lodge is that a representation of a blue star? It can be metaphored in a lot of different ways. Blue meaning that it was not about philanthropy. It was about personal spiritual development. Nice. One star. Oh, I like that. Star in the West. Yeah, not the star in the East, the star in the West. That's great. You know, it's very interesting. You have so much knowledge, and we never get into this because we always talk science when you're on the show, but I really enjoy having a discussion about occultism because, as you were mentioning off air, this is your special to me. This is really where you do your best, right? I Well, I don't know if it's my best. <laughs> it's my most interesting. I, I For me, I, I was, I'm a physicist second to being a magician. You know, I was in uh, Hollywood a few a uh, few years back at the Magic Castle. And, uh, oh, cool. Uh, yeah, and I was sitting at the head table, and the owner of the club came up to me because he didn't understand how I could, in one night, get top front table when standing reservation for over six weeks. And he came up and he said, I, I see that lapel uh, uh, button on your, on your lapel, and he says, it's not my club. Uh, what, what what magic order is that about? And I said, well, your magic is sleight of hand and mine is sleight of mind. Mm -hmm. nice. Magic is the art of changing consciousness at will. Rather than see altered states of consciousness as something to be feared or avoided, like paranoia and tweaking, these are actually tools that God gave you in the toolbox. And places where you can go that you cannot do, but you can do these states. For example, conscious state does not allow you to experience instinct and ASK, whereas in an altered state, you can, for example, increase the ability to guessing 400 times where you are in conscious state. In another altered state, you could, in a time of crisis, rip a door off the impossible. Uh, now, these are actually tools and will probably garner man's next evolutionary stage of consciousness. Mm -hmm. That's why I would say that physics is leading into magic, which is basically magic is a advanced physics as a mystery with a mystery school associated. You drive your automobile in a magic form. For example, you don't really think about how an internal engine question works, but you do know and expect certain behavior from the vehicle key in ignition and turn it clockwise. Mm -hmm. You or, need to speak a little bit closer to your mic again. I, I it's not me. I'm not moving now. So okay. something else. All right. Something Could else. Your energy. That's okay. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, and there's and there's always that because I think that a lot of what's happening to me now is with intent. Mm -hmm. Disruption. You know, minor disruption, controlling the internet, that kind of thing. Yeah, but I'm, you're more powerful than that anyway. You know that. Well, the internet. You know what it is, though, Doc, um, Dr. Richard Allen Miller. I, I like the internet. It's a window to the world, but at the same time, I think it's an energy suck. What do you it think? It can be. It can be a terrible distraction, and especially now because it's watching back at you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah we don't oh have yeah. To see anymore. That's the deal. Right. Exactly. That's very true. Do you get psychic attacks? Oh, well, I, all of my life. I remember when I first opened my magic store in Seattle, Beltane, somebody put a dead dog on my doorstep with a scroll rolled up in its mouth. Oh, it's terrible. And what happened next was that I didn't think about it, and their business burnt down to the ground. Ah. That's the threefold, yeah, that's the threefold thing. When you put a shield up, it reflects the energy back and then it reflects like amplitude of light. It will mm -hmm. go back threefold, mm -hmm. you know, yep. in amplitudes. Yeah, that's why they say threefold. It's actually square. And uh, you can protect yourself. If you want protection, I think the first thing to read would be uh, uh, Psychic Self-Defense by Dan Fortune. Mm -hmm. I remember that book. Yeah. yeah. That was one of the first books I ever read, I think. That's an old one. I just got a message in from Nick Beggage. So Nick, just, wow, yeah. I'm supposed to be calling him. He just sent what me is... something. He's online. He's probably listening to us. If he is, 
You should invite him in. <laughs> I'd love hey, to talk call to him. in if you want. You can call in. This is. Um, I, I don't know where he is uh, right now. He's on the road. He said he doesn't have any telephone. Okay. Uh, no, I have respond. to call him. I'm supposed to call him. So yes. Okay. Well, I'll awesome. let him know that. Yeah. Small world, isn't it? Yeah, Nick is was my publisher on the ESP book. He's the one that got me started into writing again. It's his Excellent. fault. Well, I think that's beautiful. <laughs> I'm so happy. And let's also, before we forget, let's talk about your books, because I know you just sent me a bunch of books. And also you have something on audio right now, which I really love. So let's go into that for a second before we dive back into the occult. Okay. What would you like to do? Uh, well, I books? just want to know how to get, first of all, how do we purchase all your books and this, now you have new books on, on video or on audio or how is that working? The audio books will be going up next week when I go to Salem and that big event in Salem. Okay. There are Bill and Katie there as the keynote speaker. I'm going in as the real Dr. Strange and they want to do a series of comics around my life and uh, my friends. So, so let us you and have some fun. Let me give you an example. Uh, last week, I was with Matt Stein doing urban survival skill workshops in Chicago. And I, a good friend of ours showed up as part of the show, uh, Norman, Norman Cantwell, the real Dalton from Roadhouse. And uh, he's going to be my Hulk. <laughs> nice. I've got some really character people, man. I, I hang out with some very strange people. Matt A. Babarello. Is one of my best friends. He ran the Brazilian Secret Service and was the hit team number one. Brazil. Wow, how cool is yeah. that? <laughs> that know. is a nice team to hang out with. Okay. He gave, he <laughs> gave, my, he gave my grandson uh, a book he'd written, and my grandson stupidly took it to school to show off all his friends, and it was mm. called Bloody Brazilian Knife Fighting Technique. Oh, and my no. grandson got kicked out of high school. I got oh, expelled. Well. <laughs> oh my gosh yeah they'd have they'd blow a gasket they see something like that right oh my daughter got pretty uptight at me but uh you know is she <laughs> i just have a lot of colorful people in my life uh that have remained good friends abe was uh Averello was uh into voodoo and mm -hmm. in 1970 mm -hmm. i introduced him i was a seal i introduced him to the field of magic now he wants to do a billion lives <laughs> just like in the movie, wow. you know, Moda and those guys. I, I have to tell you that uh, it, it's going to be fun to play with kids again, because that's basically what I am. And comic books are a lot of fun. And the kids today want to see comics take a new turn toward the real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's next Saturday, next weekend? Yeah, yeah it's Saturday and Sunday in Salem, Oregon. It's the Cherry Hill Comic Convention. Yeah. That's going to be a blast. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's fun. Yes, well, they get a load of me. <laughs> right. I like that Jack Nicholson does that in Batman. I, uh -huh. I think he's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. You know, so you do have your, so that's when you're going to be selling the audio books. Yes, I'm there. going to start them. I'm going to introduce them there. And, okay. uh, They're not yeah. on Amazon though, right? None of that. You, not yet. No, okay. no. I actually uh, have 120 one-hour audios. These are the original uh, course I taught at Harvard on metaphysics. In the nice. third year, uh, it, it's a graduate course. Dr. John Mack took, took the course, and that's what started his alien abduction series that he did. And uh, the metaphysical course is uh, got 11. Uh, it was, I taught there for 11 years, and the 15 different courses I taught on metaphysics. People think dealing with Kabbalah and the rest of the college. Whatever. And these audiobooks are done when PC Link became AOL. I was working out at the well in Berkeley at the bulletin board, and then I would go into Humboldt with uh, interactive educational systems. And I taught online, PC Link, AOL, and then the third year I was credited, and Mac then took the course, and uh, the rest of his work is history, what he's done now. Uh, there's other people. That are there. It'll be really interesting because it turns out the course is really basic. There are going to be in the audiobook a download library of rare manuscripts that I make reference to. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, they're going to be cheap. They're going to be like $10 a piece. Buy six of them. Uh, That's wonderful. Each course had eight weeks of, of lectures and so mm -hmm. questions and answers. Yeah, there was 
there's a download library. And then I do posts where you'll see that like metaphysics and uh, other UFOs. These are questions people would ask and my response during those 11 years. Excellent. So you can buy those on your website? Yeah, you, they'll be available next week. Yeah. Okay. The first, well, I... the first two uh, courses will be available. There's a, uh, 15 courses and then some lost, lost courses that I'm also going to put up. I'll tell you what, I, I would take advantage of that. Anybody listening should take advantage of, of Dr. Richard Allen Miller's books and information because you're a wellspring of data. You, they don't make people like you anymore. And I don't oh, even know, are they even teaching that kind of a class over in these, these colleges now for I'm occultism? Sorry? Are well, they teaching? Yeah, no. They, they, okay. Occult means hidden or occluded. Mm -hmm. it, it was forbidden. That's why the church, for example, would take out the Book of Enoch <laughs> out of the Bible because Raziel, the archangel, gave Enoch all the names of the fallen Lamegaton, and uh, the 72. And uh, to have the name of the demon means you have control of the demon. Then we couldn't allow that to have that be public. The Catholic Church, for example, does not even allow you to talk directly to God. You have to talk through a, a priest. Yeah, and well, that, I don't believe in the well, I'm, I'm, Okay, well, that's where I'm going with this. It, mm -hmm. that, the forbidden knowledge. That's why it was forbidden. And, right. uh, yeah, it, it, but to be, it's not secret. It's not occluded. It's uh, sacred, actually. Mm -hmm. Actually, with the Spiel of Moses, there were 10 books of Moses, not, uh, in, uh, not, not five. And, and uh, the so, sixth so let me and ask seventh you. book of Moses, yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, where, where are these lost teachings? Where, where are the books that were obfuscated or, or taken where's the information now is it in the catacombs in the vatican where is it secret society i have it so i'm in my library here wow i'm gonna go visit you you know like sixth and seventh book of moses is out you okay can, you can yeah that kind of thing yeah that knowledge is out there it's just knowing where to look mm -hmm. right i was just wondering I, that okay. I would teach where to find this kind of stuff so that you can find your own answers right there's Not a question here minute. I don't want to cut you off. I, let me know if I am. But um, there's a question here. It says, does Doc know anything about the 5G tech rollout? It was reported to make cows go crazy in Netherlands. Can we shield ourselves from this? Say, say again now. What was um, does, does the Doc know anything about the 5G tech rollout? It was reported to make cows go crazy in Netherlands. Can we shield ourselves from this? I have no idea about that okay. one. I, I have to look at that. No, I okay. probably, yeah. There's lots I don't like that. Those scrolls they found in Antarctica is turns out to be fiction. Oh, oh yeah, I figure. Well, you know, there's a lot of hoopla going on about there. A lot of people who say they've been in the Mars project, and you know, everybody's coming up with some kind of scenario over in the Antarctica area. Well, I can and I'm tell just you not what's going on in Antarctica right now. I, well, let's, I know. All right, well, let me know because yeah, because I'm I'm tired of hearing about everybody's fantasies. Quite honestly, um, so so what do you have? So last year <clears throat> they made a discovery on an ancient alien base down there that uh, heads of state from all over the world have taken in to see. And uh, David Icke, not David Icke, David Wilcox uh, suggested that it was uh, <clears throat> uh, a race of aliens that lost an intergalactic war. That's where they hit. When I was in Antarctica in the early 70s, I, I saw uh, the Nazi base up there. I saw a Viking base that was there from the 14th century. And then there were caverns that went down more than 100 miles below the mantle. And nice. did not yet have the technology to go down there. And I think that's what they did is they went down there and discovered a, a ancient civilization that had been down there. And, uh, Somebody Would that have been a remnant of the civilization? Obviously, nothing living there, but just a, an echo, uh, or a remnant? Well, let me, yeah, let me just quickly. I'm on the okay. air. I'm on home. Okay, I just told her. <laughs> that was my girlfriend. I recognized it. Okay. Uh, so, uh, anyway, what happened is, I think that they, they discovered uh, some ancient alien race, and the story goes that that, that race is what actually... Uh, changed man with the fourth genome in our blood. And uh, that's why we have no memory of our past lives. And what happened last couple of weeks 
was that they started evacuating all the civilians on on the, on the, uh, on, in Antarctica. And I mm -hmm. think that's because something came through a door. They Very started interesting. Military. Yeah, I don't know. I I can tell you that there is stuff there to be discovered that we didn't know about in the seventies. And mm -hmm. so I think that's what happened. Something was discovered, and now they've opened up Pandora's box. Well, I think there was some talk about them bringing some scalar weapons over there as well, as far as... Uh... Now, why would they want scalar about... weapons? Well, what scalar you... weapons are... are uh, uh, I, I, You know, I'm, I'm hard-pressed. That's uh, another metaphor. What a scalar is, is a lesser form of you. Like, a scalar of you would be your shadow. Like, in reference to the sun, it's in lesser dimensions than you are. Mm -hmm. And so a scalar, that's Bearden and his work with scalar weapons. Um, mm -hmm. It's a metaphor where you amplify things uh, in resonance. And, right, uh, right. Well, they br supposedly they were bringing it over to Antarctica. I, I mean, that's what they're saying. I don't really confirm. I don't know about that part. I do know okay. that they're evacuating that island. Okay. Very, very yeah. interesting. I would love to go out over there. What, what was your take energetically speaking? I've, I've heard from people that they've been out there and, and actually the power of manifestation is easier over there um, and that, that the meditations would, would ramp up and things would vibrate. And did you get anything like that when you were out there? I didn't notice okay. that, but you have to realize that I, this was back in the 70s and we're on 40 years later. Here I am. And I, I'm, mm -hmm. I can really recollect things, you know, from memory. Um, I was brought in because of the light. They wanted me to write a write on on trying to figure out how the light works, and that will be in a book I'm writing called Blue Central. It will be titled Bioluminescence. It was What's a, it going to be? Okay. Bioluminescence. It was a type of uh, light source that was a symbiont between uh, some molds and uh, small bacteria, and mm -hmm. they created a light in the cave. That's what made the cave lit as wet. It was like more than a mile high and had weather. I, you know, was there and saw it. And it's been known in history for a long time because there was a Viking there. It was in mm -hmm. ruins, but you know, it was like there. It, you know, that place has been visited more than we had any idea. Right. Well, I've I, always I, mentioned I, it's. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So I was uh, doing a Red Ice interview and uh, talking about it for the first time, and some guy from England called me and said that he was part of the British. Air Force that went in with America and Russia to bomb out the Nazis in the 60s. And I could see where there had been a nuclear war ahead. You know, I saw that part. So I had confirmation of that. He said some of the Nazis escaped into the cavern. Now, that was the cavern I'm talking about that went down more than 100 miles into the town. And mm -hmm. uh, that's, uh, you know, the mantle is supposed to be molten lava. So it isn't. It's right. different, right. yeah. And Isn't so, it crystalline or something like that? I don't know. I haven't been there. I, you know, I can speculate, but I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> I do know that uh, there is an unusual amount of underground tunnels everywhere on Earth. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I do know that. I, up here, that's why I'm here in the state of Jefferson. I mean, you know, this. there's one cave going from the presidential bunker in Weimar all the way down into Hyamma. And that's... Mm -hmm. That's like four and a half hours by motorcycle. How it's many a, hours? Four and a half hours. You can travel down this one. In, on the eastern seaboard, you can go all the way from Maine all the way down to Florida without ever coming above ground. Wow. How nice. That's the, the earth has got all kinds of underground uh, caverns and things. There is mm -hmm. one that was recently discovered. Uh, 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 it goes from uh, Scotland all the way down into Turkey through Europe. And that goes into uh, uh, Quebec Temple, uh, Quebec Temple, I think. Yeah. Quebec uh, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. And so there, there's a lot more going on on Earth than man is even aware of at this point. It's like the abyss, that movie where there's aliens down below the trench, you know, mm -hmm. living. Yeah. Well, I, I think part I of it is. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I think part of it is the deception of everything. You know, it is our celestial heritage. We have a right to know our celestial heritage. And anybody who's obfuscating that or, or editing or censoring data to avoid giving us the true information is really doing a disservice on a global scale. 
everybody needs to know their celestial heritage. So I find that, you know, you, you mentioned amnesia, which I find interesting because all of us have the cellular memory. We can go there. We can access that database. It's We've not like they're hiding anything from given, us. We've uh, given instructions not to or something because I try to go in there. You can do some of that with hypnosis, open mm -hmm. stage again, but again, it's more difficult than you realize. And that's because of probably that fourth genome that we have, the rhesus negative. Do you know what the species species is that they were supposedly were were encountering in Antarctica? I mean, any type of uh, idea what they look like? It was supposed to be reticulin. I don't know that. Okay, I was just curious. Yeah, you know, They always mention reptiles or greys, and you know there yeah, has to be more right, than that. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I don't know. I've met one alien at at Room Lake, uh, and I have no memory of being able. I, the the alien called for me. It was uh, known as Krill. It was uh, something about Area 51, where they basically, this they found two dead aliens in Roswell and a third alien that died. And mm -hmm. they did an autopsy, and when they finished the autopsy, a fourth alien occurred, appeared and wanted to trade. This was during Harry Truman's period. And uh, you can find this in Majestic books, uh, but the fourth alien was, was traded. Now, when I, when I was working paranormal, my area of expertise was paranormal. I was not alien studies. I was out of Seattle. And this, apparently this alien wanted to visit with me. I was there for approximately one hour. And I have no memory of it, uh, even in any of the forms of debriefing that they tried to do. I mm -hmm. still don't remember what happened. I remember seeing the alien. I remember feeling it being feminine. The way it communicated to me is what led me to work with Alan Frey at Willow Grove on uh, synthetic telepathy. It was, synthetic uh, telepathy? It, is that what you just said? I'm sorry? You said synthetic telepathy? Yes. Because that thing, that creature had synthetic telepathy? We have it. We all have that. Yeah, but we what about the creature? Telepathy. Was it using it too? The alien? Yeah. The alien was, well, that's what led me to the study was uh, oh, I couldn't okay. figure out how this guy could talk to me, woman. Um, with, without any voice. Right. <clears throat> and so, um, Alan Frey, I have, a, I have a paper I've written on that. I'll send that to you. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. all very fascinating. I'll tell you what, you could write a movie on your life because you've been in places that- Well, that's why they want to do comics on it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. where they embellish it a little bit and make it fun. But um, it will What happened be... to that alien? Do you know? I don't want to cut you off. I don't want to interrupt you, but I just want to know. What happened to the one that you had communication with? I don't with, know. You know. I think what I heard was that at some point, it just simply walked away. And they don't know how it escaped. Like face shifted, maybe, or something. Well, yeah, I, I wish just... I had been there. I wish I had lived that timeline. It would have been a fascinating time to be alive. I mean, <laughs> it's I mean it's with a what you were doing. fascinating time now. I mean, yeah, but it was more... Back then, it seemed like there was less craziness i don't know maybe i'm wrong but it just seemed like you guys had more opportunities um and more well, interesting the 70s were quite different than the 80s that's true in yeah. the 70s they were there was blue sky and the field was wide open they funded you even though they didn't know where you were going in the 80s it all changed and that's when they started if it didn't have application it wouldn't fund it so why did it change in the 80s was that because of what they what figured they had all the knowledge they needed, and all they did now is make money. <laughs> well, that's too bad. Well, so what are they yeah. doing with all their access to reverse engineer technology and craft and, and species? They I mean, what? As far as they needed to go. You know, Boeing, for example, has a magnetic monopole vehicle now. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> and uh, that is kind of creepy. Mm -hmm. To realize that it's non propulsion form of propulsion. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't use a jet. Right. Like that. Yeah. Works on so, magnetic fields. Well, that's good. Well, that's the way we're supposed to be doing stuff. You ask me. Makes sense. Why don't we do that all over the world? Or what's the problem? The, yeah. The next way. Actually, I like Thunderdome because no matter where you go, there you are. <laughs> that's very true, isn't it? Yeah. That's kind I'm of strange in a weird way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, well, the, the, the krill part, I remember it talking to me and then i uh, i can't i can't get past that I can't get past that oh you so you had a block or did it put a block in you yeah and they tried to debrief me they did everything trying to understand because there was no speaking i right. would just 
it was at one end of the room and I was at the other and it was like communicating with me or something. And I don't know what happened then. But after that, uh, I just resumed my work and now I, here I am. You know, I heard that other people who have had that kind of symbiotic exchange tend to carry on the frequency or the signature of the extraterrestrial itself so that there's always a psychic link. Do you feel that? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I have <clears throat> all kinds of links. Uh, I'm you know, sure. Across, you, you have know. all sorts of wires out of your head. I know. Yeah. You, a lot yeah. of antennas, right? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Just it, you. It, it, it's interesting. I think the thing about comics is kind of cool because imagination is reality. And we are creating our own apocalypse alien. And so there's something else going on here. We haven't figured that out yet. Well, you know what I see? You know, it's interesting. I see a world in collision between advanced technology, black sciences, and then this almost primordial wave of people that are going backwards in evolution. So something's got to give here. Something's got to shift this because we can't go backwards. And considering we have all these black technologies and advanced sciences, why don't we utilize them on a global scale? It would make more sense to just do the I right thing. That, yeah, I think that we are. I think mm -hmm. there's more and more people listening to you, for example. Mm -hmm. And that is the awakening. Very true. Well, they need to wake up because I think they've been slept for far too long. Well, we're still asleep, but as it as it would appear, it seems as if we are waking up more and more. Mm-hmm. Well, it's beings like you that are waking people up as well, because like I said, you're a wellspring of information. Oh, I'm just one of them waking up. I'm a, I'm well, just... no, you have a lot of data. I know that. And, you know, it's nice to have you on my show. I've told, I've told you this before, because it's, it's always a treat for everybody to hear you. I mean, even if the audio is kind of glitchy here and there, but it's always nice to have you on because, you know, you don't, they don't make people like you anymore. I don't know how many people are out there that have a lot of data on many different levels. And that's, you're one of them. So, you know, take that for as a compliment, but. Okay, Something. thank you, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Buy my books. <laughs> I love your books, uh, and, and I encourage... Starving encourage... artists. <laughs> you know, well, you, see, you can't be starving artists. This is ridiculous. So everybody out there, please purchase Dr. Richard L. Miller's books. And I did post your uh, links in the chat. Do not use Amazon. Yeah, please do not use Amazon. They are bootlegging all of my titles and printing them. And so are is they really? Yeah, it's, uh, I've got it, physical evidence. It, it was Create Space, and I'm going to go at at Amazon, like, uh, I, okay, I busted you on drugs now. I'll, I'll let you walk if you give me your source. So wait a second. Did you not did put it. your own books on Create Space because they automatically put it up on Amazon, right? Yeah, it's Amazon Prime. Anything on Amazon Prime by me is a bootleg. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. Well, that's good From to know. ESP, yeah, ESP, my old Magic and Ritual Use series, all of those are bootlegs. Uh huh. Wow. And it's not wow. right. I'm not no. getting anything for them. I, I don't see any of my royalties from my books on Amazon, so you're not alone. Um, it's not right. Yeah. What they're doing. No, it's, it's not, not right. right. It's never and right. At my age, that's my only source of income. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm 73, and I'm like huh, writing like crazy, trying to stay ahead of them. Well, you don't sound 73. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's good, right? And you live in a space and time. Uh, yeah. Well, that's good. Well, we're all we're all mutating and morphing and shifting, and you know, it's a, it's a strange world. I'll tell you what, it's a very very strange world we live in. But I think that you're right. You know, we are manifesting realities as we come and go, and uh, you know, that's the one thing we really need to look and see what we're really creating on the timeline. Yeah, I'm looking at this note you sent me about uh, five. Oh yeah, that was the one I asked you already about. Oh. That was the one. Yeah, and you said you yeah, were familiar with five G. I'll have to be. Okay, yeah, and, and if, if this rolls that. around and he has any extra information on what exactly 5G tech rollout means, let us know and text it in yeah. and we'll be more, give you more information on I've it. Yeah, of it. That doesn't, you know, I know that uh, uh, What's Her Face did uh, cattle mutilation and, you know, where they will take specific... Oh, Linda Moulton Howe? Yeah, they'll take certain uh, parts of the cow that, uh, and I, I don't know what that is. You know, I still I thought that was, was black, black operations. Uh, I never saw that as being an extraterrestrial event. I always saw it as being black operations and military stuff going on in covert ops. Well, and that's trying to see thing. if radiation is in the drinking water, that kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but what's interesting is that a lot of the stuff that's quote-unquote UFO abductee oriented, I think is more just covert technology. But we are going to have a break, everybody. You're listening to Raven Star Switching Hour. This is Studio A at freedomslips.com. And my wonderful guest is Dr. Richard Allen Miller. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. 